Chapter 55-60 Einar's POV What the hell is wrong with these people? I was contemplating the situation of this cell in the toilet since it was the only place where you could relax while releasing pent-up tension. It had been a month since we conquered Camelot. The round table was brought here in the castle since it was now the main capital. Construction of the capital was also going well, but there was only one problem, the rumors about me. Vortigern called me his friend before fleeing and all knights clearly heard his statement on the battlefield. Now they were calling me a hidden traitor of the Britons who has been secretly working for Vortigern. Artoria who was crowned as the king after the coronation ceremony also didn't help much. Instead, we got into a quarrel. The good thing was that I was able to get to the location of place where I could achieve divinity. Flashback. Arthur, do you really think that just punishing commoners for spreading rumors will do any good? I asked Artoria in the presence of roundtable knights. I didn't refer to her as King Arthur since I was close to her just like Merlin. Marlen, Gawain, Brother Kay, Bedivere were also present. In addition to them, there was another knight who was present in the meeting was Agravain, the jerk and the cause of all this mess. What's more, you appointed Agravain of all people. This jerk almost executed a child for calling traitor and throwing a pebble at me. I stated what happened. It was a normal day when I was patrolling with Agravain and Galahad to make some security measures when a child came and threw a pebble and called me a traitor. His parents were Saxons and died in the Camelot War so he was blaming me for their death. But the situation got worse when Agravain took the action to behead the child in the broad daylight. Since he was Saxon, no one was willing to help the child. However I stopped him in time and when I asked the reason he stated that King Arthur banned anyone from spreading these rumors and if anyone found out to be guilty, they were to be punished according to law. Every knight of the round table has the authority to execute anyone unless someone is noble or Briton, but if you are Saxon then you are at the mercy of God. I could do nothing in this case since if I stood for Saxons then I will heat those rumors more but I can't simply see a child being killed. I was just abiding by the orders of my king. It was Agravain who spoke. You shut your goddamn mouth. I just didn't chop you into pieces since you are part of the round table but don't test my patience. I glared at him. Not only him but all the knights shuddered with fear from my intense killing intent. I hold the greatest authority where I could pass a judgment and execute or eliminate any knight below the rank fifth. I held myself from killing this emotionless jerk since he was an excellent officer with information gathering and also the son of Lady Morgan. Einar, calm down. Merlin came and patted my shoulders. I sighed and calmed down. I began to get annoyed easily because of all those rumors. I shrugged Merlin's hand and spoke to Artoria. Just lift the order and leave those rumors to me and ban Sir Agravain from executing anyone without any evidence. Einar is right, if we take this kind of action again, it will only heat more rumors before people start rebelling, Merlin stated in my favor. I would also vote for Sir Einar. It was Percival. He was another young knight similar age to Galahad and could be considered a perfect knight. He was not the strongest but wisest strategist. I also think Uncle Einar's point is valid. I witnessed the incident so I can explain how severe the situation could have got. Galahad also stood for me. One by one all the knights stood up for me so Artoria had to take back her order. Then from now on, all knights of the round table are prohibited from taking any action against these kinds of rumors except for Sir Einar. Additionally, Sir Agravain is banned from taking any executing measures against anyone over the year and is advised to reflect on the actions in the meantime. Artoria then announced her decision. After that, we talked about the distribution of the authority of territories that come under her rule. Previously only Merlin and I rejected to take any territory since we are mages and mages hardly have time to consider this kind of job but I asked her to take an area near the northwestern part besides a river and near the sea. Also, I asked to take responsibility to run the church to look after children and widows victims of war. After the meeting, Merlin wanted to talk in private. You okay, Einar? Sai asterisk yeah, I am good but most importantly, Merlin, I want to be the one to go there to retrieve the sacred weapon. We both knew that defeating Vortigern would be tough so he was searching for a way to make a weapon that holds far greater power than any weapon with human reach. Yeah, I was just about to go but if you want some unyielding power boost then you can take my place. Merlin smiled as he didn't care if I become so strong that I could even take down Artoria. Be honest with me. What are the odds of me being killed? He only smiled awkwardly, but I can't let this chance slip. Give me the key, and I will be going. He nodded and gave me a crystallized shard. According to him, it can grant me the path that leads to the reverse side of the world. 
I neither have the intention nor power to go reverse side of the world where gods and other phantasmal species reside. My main aim was that path that anchors two sides of the universe. The anchor's name is Rongaminiad. It was the place where I will also be getting my divinity. Flashback ends. Sight asterisk I hope I could survive that. I was a little afraid to go there since not a single human could survive there. Merlin is a cheat since he could use any magic according to the situation but I am not Merlin. Although I have far more magic reserve, I still lack the talent to make any spell according to the situation in no time. I am here so why you are so worried? It was Elaine who used to talk with me even when I was taking a dump. I am worried about Artoria. I don't know but we seem to have distanced ourselves. It was not the first time almost whenever it comes to take some tough decisions where resources were limited and have to neglect some poor in need. I understand that a king's decision shall be for the people but what she was doing is save 70 people and letting the other 30 die. It is a feeble method but it will eventually backfire once a sword starts hanging on those 70 people saved when another divide rule comes. I can't comment on your love life since I don't have a physical body to offer you a vagina to suck. I just ignored this horny fairy and sighed. You are right, I should stop taking everyone's worry. I was not a saint but I at least want to protect children and women who were dying. Guess it is time to go. I put my pants up and took steps to get another power boost. By the way, you forgot to wipe your ass. What the hell? Artoria's POV. Where did I go wrong? After I claimed Camelot, some terrible rumors surrounded the capital. My beloved Einar is a traitor? That shouldn't be possible. It was all Vortigern's fault. I blamed my uncle, but I knew deep down in my heart that I was also responsible for it. I wanted to do something for Einar as a king but things went south. I just wanted to make this country prosper and be a king that he would be proud of but now. I should work hard. It was at that time that my colorful dream of living with him started turning gray. I held the crystal shard and channeled some mana onto it. Suddenly the environment changed into rocking walls. It was proof that I had been teleported to a place that would take me to the anchor. Cough asterisk hell, the oxygen is here so little. I immediately cast some protective spells to avoid being getting hurt due to the atmospheric environment. What's more, the cave was dense with methane gas. It would normally be impossible for a normal human to even come here, let alone survive. I took out Aldon from inventory and then chant another spell. Fabrication on reality. It was a cheap magic smell where I could hide anywhere and any plane without getting hurt from magic barriers. Merlin taught me this magic since I couldn't survive without it. Even though he was a jerk, I still respect him for being a good teacher who would go for any length for me. Anyway, the magic is a buff that lets the surrounding perceive me as part of it and can't hurt me. I walked further until I found a small compartment between two rocks. Einar, this is it. Be careful here. Elaine warned me when both of us sensed that we were close to that place. I took a deep breath and touched the hole. Again, the view changed. I covered my eyes with intense golden light before the spell started working and enabled me to withstand in that place. So beautiful. I can't help but exclaim since it was the most stunning place I have ever seen. Spiral-shaped strings were emerging from the endless void from one end and to another end. One can't simply determine the starting or ending point of this spiral pathway. I was also floating with one end below my feet and one above my head. It is still a wonder that I could even stand here. I was surprised because any other living or dead couldn't simply survive here. Even gods don't stand a chance since Rongaminiad is made to keep supernatural creatures from crossing from reverse side to the human world. It is because you are half-blood. Similar to Merlin, you also have many advantages in surviving both planes. Elaine answered my curiosity. That's why that jerk could locate these kinds of places. Oh well, I guess mixed blood is not that bad. For pursuing powers, I considered turning into a complete fairy a number of times, but my instincts refrained me from it. Even Merlin warned me that survivability of any pure supernatural will become a huge headache on the surface. The surface refers to what common people know about you. Since gods left to another side, mixed blood remains on earth. I still didn't know the exact theory, but I will surely get into trouble for sure. I don't have time to think about that. Elaine, tell me how do I proceed from here? Sight asterisk you can't do anything without me, do you? Well, first you have to prepare yourself for listing the name of the method you are going to use. Wait, don't tell me. Cultivation. Arg new.
I couldn't believe that those trashy methods of learning martial arts from just sitting and breathing will be the method I would also have to use. I had read so many cultivation comics in my past life since some had good plots but almost all of them turned trash after a few chapters. I even started to hate words like cultivation or dare. That's the same reaction when you force those poor knights to learn jojo poses. Hey, I never forced anyone. I rolled my eyes. Gee. Aw fine. Tell me what this cultivation thing requires. Take out your dick and jerk here. See if your semen ends up in your mouth due to the gravitational force. Just sit and absorb whatever the fuck is in the air like you used to do it on earth. Why are you acting like those beta MC who ask everything to system? Elaine was mad. Because I am cultivating. I made a smug face. Go to hell. I crossed my legs and sat to meditate. This is the method I used to use to increase my magic reserve and improve its quality. Slowly I started to gather golden magic particles rare to this spiral space. The buffs I cast also started to wear off since with the buff, I can't absorb the aura. My skin started to burn and I felt intense pain in my body due to absorbing a new kind of energy but thanks to my mixed blood, my body immediately began self-repairing and adjust the new energy slowly into my body. Self-repairing is also an inborn ability of fairies but mine was on another level since I used experience points to upgrade it. After meditating just for an hour, I was dead tired. Well duh. What do you think the cost of these boosts? Still. I can't even move an inch. I used the Saatama workout scheme so I had good stamina and could run for a whole day and I won't get tired but it was just exhausting. However, after that, I didn't stop and continued to meditate for the whole day. Including this method, Elaine explained to me another method which was to tear a spiral thread and wrap around myself and I will be a full-fledged god in 100 years without any need to die so it was not an option. So I only this method seemed more feasible since I could use divinity in my attacks. If I go for full god mode then I would have to retire to Avalon since people may start worshipping me and it will give Aleia a chance to strike me. I didn't know how strong Aleia was so I could only approach the low and safe method until I learned some kind of god level magic. I was also thinking to take a leave for such a god after dealing with Vortigern. Anyway, after cultivating, ugh, I really hate this word, for a whole day, I slowly opened my eyes to see several notifications on the book. Coagulations to host for acquiring rank A divinity and rank A flight ability. Divinity A, an active ability that you could use separately to apply special effects on your attacks against any enemy considered evil, corrupted, or judged to be wrong. It also increased the intensity of your attack by 100%. There are certain restrictions where you could only use divine energy for only four times on as your new castiffle forms. More than that, you will attract a temporary or even permanent backlash. 10 million experience points are required to upgrade it to rank A++++ to remove backlash increase your attack to 600%. Flight A, you could fly in the air regardless of consuming mana with the speed of Mach 1. This ability is directly related to your agility stat. Stats. Name, Einar Sirius. Race, human slash fate slash divine. Age, 22. Physique. Strength, B dash B plus plus plus. Mana, EX. Endurance, B plus dash A. Agility, A. Luck, EX. Oh my god, wow wow. I exclaimed after I got a mega power boost. I put my ass on the line to upgrade my stats yet from just cultivating for a whole day, I changed to a completely different level. What the? I was surprised since my appearance had also changed. One silver fairy wing with golden light was coming out from my back while a silver half crown of four connected crosses appeared on the right side of my head. A thin golden light was also surrounding me like I was a super scion. His form is similar to Yuno's spirit drive from back clover. The difference is silver and golden color instead of green and they were on the right side instead of left. What in the actual ass? I then read another notification. Congratulations for obtaining Half True Spirit Mode. Half Spirit Mode, a temporal form attained due to a mixture of fairy and divine magic. User can use this form irrespective of using divinity and increase your total power by 30%. Congrats on achieving a Super Scion form. Now make me your Chi-Chi and produce a Gohan. No thanks. My little brother is only made to spit in Artoria's hole. Speaking of little brother, check out your pants. I didn't know what she was saying until I opened my zip and 7 inches big mouse came out. Damn, even this thing grew large. I exclaimed but then I noticed that my height was the same. Having this long dick with 13 years old boy's body felt so wrong. 
Anyway, I flew to the spiral wall and pulled a long thread. Its magical form was so long that it could wrap the whole city, but after I cast a magic lock spell, it reduced to only 10 meters silver tape like a long thread. It was the main ingredient to make the weapon for Artoria to use. After taking final note of this location, I came out to the human world to finish Vortigern's chapter once and for all. Einar's POV The final day to settle scores with the main villain of Arthurian legends was upon us. King Arthur, after conquering Camelot, made another expedition for the small city behind mountains to locate his uncle Vortigern. According to information we received, it was believed that Vortigern was raising another army to strike back. Moreover, the city he was in was also one of the main strongholds of Saxtons so a big army of knights was needed. At least that was the plan to take down the former king once we reached that place until. Roar asterisk. A big silver western dragon roared capable of shaking mountains. No way. I was at loss for words. Vortigern, who was supposed to be just a strong human with dragon essence, changed into a complete dragon. Everything turned into turmoil. What formation of knights? What magic artifacts? What mastery of sword? The demon dragon Vortigern was like the biggest and strongest foe of the history of Britons. That was the form of someone who wanted to destroy. With one sweep, he created air vacuumed arcs from his claws that shattered knights and animals coming his way into chunks of flesh. The roar of the demon dragon brought dark clouds that dropped thunder, creating more destruction. The malice manifesting from its neck, engulfed corpses, and near settlements into ashes. He was turned into Britain itself. The evil in every people's heart on this island has taken the form of this demon dragon. In this state, the little fairy deity could only see the massacre happening from above. It's all my fault. I could only accuse myself of all of this. In the War Council, I was the one who made this suggestion to take a fully equipped army rather than all the Knights of the Round Table and their personal housing knights. It was due to facing the army behind Vortigern while Knights with Holy Weapons will be facing Vortigern directly. How would I know that there was no war but only a massacre waiting for me? Einar, I know you are going through a cliché drama state but focus on the present. Your whining could only result in more deaths. I heard Elaine and snapped out. You are right. I then conveyed my message to Tristan and Lancelot to defend knights from the rear while retreating as further as possible. Arg! I looked around when I heard a familiar cry. Galahad was injured who was leading a small party but unfortunately come in direct contract with the thunder. Roar asterisk. Vortigern roared and his neck manifested again in the direction of Galahad. I knew that he won't be able to survive. I flew like lightning but I knew that I would be late so I cast another spell. Swap. My eyes glowed as I was swapped by Galahad. It was magic that if someone was marked, you could swap places from him. Chasty full half true sprit mode, guardian. I then called the stronger version of Mono, a big stuffed muscular bear about 9 meters in height who took powerful fire breath while protecting myself and knights behind me. After the assault settled, I guided Mono who ran and punched Vortigern and then engaged in direct combat. T thank you. Uncle Einar. Galahad came and looked a little apologetic, but I had no time to coax him. Take all the knights and retreat back as further as possible. Leave Vortigern to me and Arthur. Go. Galahad didn't even try to argue back and helped his fellow knights to walk back. Shit, why the hell I only have two turns? I asked myself since I was supposed to use any of Chastyful Half-True Spirit modes four times, but now I only had two times to use other forms. It is because Vortigern is using unique magic called destruction to all Britons. Anyone who is Britons or on your side will get a high debuff with both attack and defense down. Look at Galatin and Excalibur. Elaine informed me of the cause since I was also losing mana very quickly. I then saw Artoria and Gawain on vanguard fighting Vortigern while ordering other knights for a retreat after sensing my approach. It showed that she still trusted me on my strategy even after the blunder I pulled. However, their holy swords were in their weakest state. Galatin's brilliance was stolen while Excalibur was lit only like a weak bonfire. I flew near the holy sword duo and asked, Arthur, Sir Gawain, need any assistance? Thanks, Einar for taking the timely decision and engaging him for close combat but we are almost finished. Artoria thanked me. She was also admiring my new half-spirit form, my right wing, and crown on my head. Sir Einar, your new holy weapon is very helpful to buy us time, but we are still in a weak state. Gawain informed me showing Galatin, which was only a simple sword now while envying my new weapon. See? 
Your chasty foal is still working because of your new divinity, but since it was merged with the spear, its power is also a little weak. Elaine explained to which I nodded. I think I got a shot, I told them after Mana was able to keep Demon Dragon at bay, but it was also running out of time. Einar, I believe in you, Artoria told me while taking Gawain back. Roar asterisk. Vortigern roared when Mono disappeared after taking its time. I had two choices now. Either use Sunflower or Spear to strike him down. I immediately disregard using Sunflower since it is pure firepower in half-true spirit mode that affects the whole area. If used then whether it will kill Vortigern or not but knights who are still in the area will be perished. My other option includes a new bigger spar that could strike down with a similar effect, with greater physical force. I made a hand sign and called a regular spear. Chasty full half true sprit mode, spear. When I called its name, it glowed brightly and began to grow until it reached a length of 10 meters. A golden long spar could be seen levitating and pointing its aim towards the demon dragon. I pointed my finger at Vortigern and smirked. You are finished, bang. Just as I said, the giant spear shot towards the big dragon who didn't have time to either counterattack or dodge until he was engulfed in a big crimson cross-shaped arc. Boom asterisk. The strike was so intense that made a thunderclap like a spear was hit with something equally strong. After the dust settled, a dragon who was supposed to be silver was covered with crimson blood. Did you get it? Artoria came on Dun Stallion. I guess, no. I could sense that he still had his strength left while I was running out of options. Einar, he could only be killed by King Arthur and no one else. I frowned at this weird setting. Hey, he is getting away. Gawain pointed at Vortigern who was silently raising its wings to flee. Arthur, I got one chance. You know what do. I told Artoria who nodded and take out a silver spiral-shaped lance. It was wrong Aminiad. Merlin and I made that lance together but put some restrictions on it since it was simply the most powerful weapon that was beyond any human's reach. I again hand signed and my chasty foal turned into several spiky long daggers. It was increase, but those kunai were longer. Those daggers flew above Vortigern and then fell on him like rain nailing his limbs and wings on the ground. Roar asterisk. Vortigern roared in agony when he saw his death near. To the light that reaches the last frontier. Artoria on other hand was ready and the lance was glowing brightly in her arms. She pointed the lance on the sky and pulled the halter of her dun stallion to run in the air till she reached the sky. Her lance glowed brightly clearing away dark clouds and revealing the shining sun as if announcing the strike of the ideal king. What at that shining lance? Gawain was in awe. I looked at him as if he was really an idiot. Didn't he just witness my shining lance that puts Vortigern on death's door? And so, cut the skies and bind the earth. She stated once last time before she ran and dropped like a spiral-shaped meteor. Wrong Aminiad. And here I was called Chunny for calling names of my attack. Boom asterisk. Vortigern was again engulfed in a golden dome before a big explosion cleared dark clouds and accounted for the historic victory of King Arthur. After the dust settled, we came forward towards a weak old man lying lifelessly with a smile on his face. Vortigern. Artoria stated the name of the person. Fools, all of you. Vortigern spoke with a smile looking down on us. To defeat one tyrant, they would bring another holocaust. Oh my little brother Uther, you cannot save this country. Because. He was talking even after coughing blood. Even on verge of death, I couldn't sense any defeat from his voice as if. Haha, this friend of mine knows very well. He said pointing his direction towards me. His voice was not loud but could be heard by every Briton on the battlefield. Einar is not Dash. I grasped her hand tightly when she tried to defend me. She then realized that she was playing in his hands and didn't try to talk back. Tell me man from the farthest future, is there any magic to your world even though concept and legend exist? His question made me realize the things I was neglecting for a long time. Even in type moonverse, magic and the age of gods exist, how come common people were not aware of it even though many people were seen practicing magic? Why was no one pointing that out? Even if Clock Tower or several other organizations exist to prevent anyone from spreading the news about all of this, they still can't control the whole world? Aleia was not that strong. The most she could pull was that wannabe hero. Just what is behind all of this? Even if magic is disappearing, making such an existing concept a simple legend is just absurd. See? That's because the Age of Mysteries has already ended. From now on this is the time of civilization, the Age of Man. 
You all are at odds with humans who will reach starts without any need for a miracle. Ask this friend who understands me. Ask him if the man can achieve what other creatures can't even dream to see. Ask him. Enough. Artoria was about to slit his through before he could talk further, but I was stopping her. Curse your fate, just like me you are all minions. Old Britain has fallen a long time ago. Nothing could stop and whoever tries to stop, he will be crushed by these old people of the Age of Mysteries. He laughed capable of shaking the city and turned into dust. When the end of the war was declared, the king was brighter than ever. Anyone who could gaze at the shining figure of the king would certainly be left captivated by his power. A demonstration of how divine the battle was. Knights of the Round Table were also fine except Bedivere who lost his right arm. Almost everyone forgot everything said by Vortigern in the final moments of his life except for me. At that time I realized that I would definitely facing something that will either kill me or turn the direction of this world for destruction. Einar's POV. Another month had passed since the death of Vortigern. King Arthur held a grand banquet for the celebration of ending grey days and to welcome the bright life that people were expecting from the ideal king. The rumor of me being a traitor was still running across the streets of the capital but they were calmed as the attention was greatly focused on King Arthur and his glory. However, it didn't calm the calamity we faced due to losing many men across the plain. Many knights lost their lives and their family didn't even receive the bodies of their loved ones. The weather was calm and the year also welcomed bountiful harvest of the year. Vortigern's threats were heard by everyone but none of them were taking that seriously anymore. They were more focused on praising the king. Knights of the Round Table also received some setbacks. Bedivere, one of the most senior knights, lost his right arm. I would have healed his arm but the problem was the curse that he was inflicted upon where as long as he is on this island under King Arthur, his arm cannot be healed. So I made a prosthetic arm made with advanced magic circuits so the problem was not severe like before. Everything was deemed fine on the surface, but this island was still suffering from all kinds of problems. These problems were a challenge for the king but the king was bright to solve those issues with any major cost. The reason was that I provided some useful tactics to face those shortages like building dams to face drought and a progressive tax system. The king had a very good asset in form of me that the king could use for great advantage but everything turned into turmoil when the king called a meeting of great nobles in presence of knights of the round table. I object. I stood in presence of a crowd of people. Are you telling me to turn every Saxons into slaves? Are you guys out of your mind? I couldn't believe how their mind was working. These nobles were asking Artoria to sell every Saxon in the capital and the other parts of this island as a slave. Technically, in this age where slavery was common and considering how low was the population of Saxons, it was an ideal strategy to increase the workforce without any intention of paying them. Every knight also considered though cruel but effective method there was no way that I would let any innocent be treated like garbage just because of their race. Then are you suggesting to let those damn invaders go? A duke finally raised his voice. He was Duke Luke, a person who supported Artoria most with labor and resources as well as the person managing the greatest territory near the capital. I lost almost all of my family and men in the war against those freaking invaders. Are you saying that we should simply sit and let those scums run freely in my watch? Though he was a duke, but also a noble one. None of the nobles liked me since my approaches always clashed with their interest, but there is no way I could let anyone have their way in this tough time. Yeah, we are going by your approach since our glorious king trust Lord Einar doesn't mean we simply sit silently for whatever you are gonna do. Don't forget that we agreed to progressive tax scheme when even we are short on money. Following Duke Luke, other nobles also got the leeway to make arguments while making Duke Luke a shield. These were all greedy nobles who only care about money. Everyone lost their loved ones one way or another. If you go around and making an enemy of the whole race just because you lost a family member is just racial genocide. As for all others, don't make me reveal what dirty secrets you guys are hiding. Just because I am not saying doesn't mean that I don't know what is happening behind the curtains. I answered Duke Luke while warning other nobles. They all shuddered when I released killing intent and didn't try to say something back. I was about to force my way when I felt stares of fellow knights, Merlin and Artoria, and realized that I crossed the line. In the end, I was a knight and not a king. Artoria then stood up and announced her decision. My friend Sir Einar is right. These people spent 25 years of their lives and it is an almost second generation living here. Making them slaves just because of their race is against the laws of God. So I hereby stand against this agenda. If anyone has a problem then please stand. Artoria declared and blinked at me but I didn't respond and scoffed off. 
she should have stand before making me their target, was my thought. Then I also declare all my assets and my title as Duke Luke to my most honorable king. Forgive me your majesty, but my hatred for these people will never let me look on the graves of my loved ones. Duke Luke stand also declared. Everyone start gossiping since he was a respectful noble and he was leaving because of me. Even Artoria and other knights flinched since his leave would have a huge impact on the aristocracy. This is presumptuous. I don't know who is king anymore. Lord Einar should just take charge instead of His Majesty King Arthur. Their target was me. Artoria or any other knights didn't have words to retort. Even I was stunned by these greedy people who have instantly formed a group to retaliate against me. Although I was calmed on the surface, I was boiling from anger. My mana was visible as an aura, but it was in crimson. I was having a hard time keeping myself from killing all of them. Humph. Lord Einar should be the king. Well, I don't know if it is possible considering a Vortigern's friend he is. That was the last sentence spoken by Duke Luke who mocked me like a traitor. You nasty fuckers. I lost my mind. I went half spirit mode, changed my spear to increase, and shot all the daggers towards those nobles. E-I-I. All nobles screamed when they witnessed the intense killing intent of something more horrifying than a demon dragon. They could see death in front of their eyes in form of small daggers, but death never came. All kunai stopped just before their eyes. Some nobles fainted while some shit in their pants. Duke Luke also passed out. I was also stunned not from seeing the action of these nobles, but my fellow knights. You guys. I widened my eyes when I saw knights with their unsheathed weapons, and their target was me. I knew that I lost my mind so it was reasonable action, but I felt pain in my heart when I saw Artoria with her Excalibur. Her target was also me. Arthur. My eyes shuddered before I calmed down and dismissed Chastyfall. Without saying a single word, I vanished from the conference room. Wait dash. Artoria tried to stop me, but I didn't listen. Late but in righteous time I realized that Vortigern was somewhat right, it is impossible to save these people. Artoria's POV. All of you dismissed. After ending the conference, I came to my room without showing any kind of emotion. However, my legs gave up as soon as I set foot in my room. Why? Why is everything turning like this? Even if I try, I couldn't stop my tears falling for betraying the only person I loved, I could only mourn for my own uselessness. I had set my dream that I would never make my love sad yet I did. The thing I feared happened. Einar left me. My grey days began. Merlin's POV. I could see my two disciples distancing from each other. Both of them are at fault. Einar, for losing his temper, and Artoria, for not taking any timely action, but both of them are adults. I didn't meddle in their relationship since it was their problem to solve, but the main reason for my negligence was because I could see the right future. Artoria must be thinking that Einar left her due to her betrayal, but I knew that Einar only went for training. However, it was a good time to stable the capital's affair. All for the glory of the ideal king. Sigh asterisk after traveling for a month, I am finally in Ireland. I stretched my arms and took a long breath. It had been a month to travel from Camelot to the border of this island known as Early Christian Ireland by Britons. I covered most of the distance in the air, but I like to travel on foot more so I take a little more time. I also have to settle matters with my territory where I brainwashed all the nobles to obey me and act on my behalf. Before coming here, I sent a message to Galahad to take every Saxon with children and women as a priority to my territory without informing Artoria. I stopped trusting her for the matter of ethical affairs. She was king so she could do anything, however, I was still reluctant to let the whole new generation suffer. I am not a hero, but not heartless enough to just ignore their suffering however I could only do this for widows and children who lost their parents or husbands in the war. Anyway, after roaming the coast of this island, I understood that the climate of this land was inhabitable. Storms and drought nearly erased the main civilization of this island. Most of the people were only living on the coast or migrated to Britain. If I remember, then Bedivere is also from this island. Yeah, this new atmosphere made me drop my love juice. Elaine was also feeling refreshed. Yeah, Britain was obviously suffering from some kind of curse. So, straight towards God of this land? There is nothing better to do. I nodded and took out broken Gibalg. It was the key that will take me to Dunscaith, the place also known as the Land of Shadows. I have done some research so I knew a little bit about its legend. 
In my past life, ahem, my parents were kind of racist cough asterisk anti-Irish sentiment cough asterisk so I didn't read proper legends about this land except for some known gods like Leff or Morrigan so I didn't know a thing. I know Cuchulain from the Fate series but I didn't read his legends. All I know that he had a mentor who taught him spearmanship and some runes. Anyway, I cast special magic on Gibalg and I started sensing the same aura that was coming from the spear. I didn't waste time and flew in the air after casting some defensive buffs on myself. The weather began to get harsher the more I moved to the place this spear was taking me. Soon I came to Northern Ireland. Storms and thunderclaps were wreaking havoc on the land. Not a single trace of civilization could be seen, but I could only dig out the gate or whatever the pathway was that spear's energy was guiding me. After making a protective bounded field, I destroyed the area through sunflower. What was revealed was a cave. I went inside and found a gate with some ancient Irish scriptures written on it. Before coming here, I learned Irish, but the language changes through time so I was unable to understand anything. Why I have this feeling that someone is thinking loot about me? I felt like someone was watching from somewhere. Must be the owner of this place. By the way, watch out if the person turns out to be an ugly bastard. Shoda like Shoda, but hate you be. I ignored Elaine and started searching for some kind of clue. Look at the corner. Elaine pointed at a tablet with different scriptures written on it. It was like a dialing pad. What is this saying? I also don't know but I think these are numbers. Try a code. Seriously. I shook my head. What the hell with this weird setting? However, as someone who has rank X luck, it was an easy challenge. I pressed 7 and guess what it opened. However next thing I look, I was in a different reality. There was a metallic door and behind it was a long path leading towards some kind of fortress. I could also feel corrosive undead magic. Is that really under word? Tell me, oh fairy with divinity, your reason for coming to the land of shadows. I heard a plain feminine voice when I was thinking about what to do next. I instantly understood that whoever the person is, it must be a female. I was just hoping that she doesn't turn out to be your typical ugly witch, but considering I am in the anime world, I was sure that she must be a beautiful hold hag. Oh most beautiful woman, beside Artoria, I came here from the east and this cute fairy wishes to receive your teachings. Please make me your disciple. Return, from here. This place is not suitable for any mortal, especially for a mortal. I sighed with a deadpan look. This cliché was happening. I know, but I am a mage and spearman and I still wish to learn something more. I could do anything if you ask me except for marrying me since I still have a girl I like. I even brought the spear that you granted to your disciple. I said and showed her Gibalg. Throw that spear here and leave. I thought for a second then take out various stuff while showing my magic. I have cookies and uno cards. One guy, please. I used my trump card, charm. You are a persistent one, are you? Then follow this path and solve whatever trial comes your way. Just as she agreed, the gate opened showing me a crimson long road. What follows after that were trials, and I should tell you that they were freaking easy. First, there was a closed path where I have to dodge arrows, but guess what, none of them hit me and I just walked out calmly. After that, I had to clear some undead skeletons and with my firepower, it was a child's game. Jumping on rocks to cross the sea of lava, who want to jump with such little body when you could simply fly. Soon I landed in front of a fortress. However, everything I perceived was like a death. Even the air in the atmosphere was magically produced, must be due to that female witch to let me breathe easily. Era, you have finally come? Era? Milf? I turned around and what greeted my eyes was the figure of a mind-blowing beautiful goddess. Ah, my booty! It was an extremely beautiful woman. She had long purple hair and red eyes and wears a full-body outfit that highlights her curvaceous body with metallic shoulder pads. She was the most beautiful woman I had ever seen in my life. Vivian, Lady Morgan, and Guinevere were also beautiful women but they don't even come close to her in terms of beauty and elegance. I never considered Artoria beautiful but cute and must be protected. And the way this lady walk elegantly, I deduce that she must be a former queen or something. Booty? What is that? She asked with a plain look without any kind of emotion just like. A beautiful Kuderi milf? I looked at her with gleaming eyes but the next thing I knew I received one solid punch on my head. I didn't sense when she was able to come near me and how she knew my physical strength to put limited force on her punch. I looked into her eyes while rubbing my head and received a beautiful cold yet calm smile. 
You are one eccentric one like my one pupil. Follow me then. She said and started walking. I nodded and followed her. By the way, my name is Einar Sirius du Lac, a knight of the round table. What is your name, oh the most beautiful goddess of my life? I asked after introducing myself. Oh, you can call me Scathack. She answered without looking at me. SCA what? Einar's POV. I was following behind Scathack who was examining Broken Gibalg that I gave it to her. Along the way, she asked me several questions about the outside world and about me and I sincerely answered. She didn't show any emotion when she found out that her original Irish population was almost wiped out due to cold weather and her land was currently inhabitable. She also told me about herself. She was formerly a human who had chosen to guard the land of shadows, which in her time was part of the human world but after the age of gods, it turned into a different reality. She had slain many people, mythical creatures, and even gods in her life. She was also from the ruling class of her time and many sought out apprenticeship. She also told me about her favorite apprentice Siu Chulian who was also her last student. You have very lustful eyes for a boy of your age? Scat Hack said with monotone. I was busted. I was constantly eyeing her body since she was wearing a skin-tight suit that was basically made at her second skin. Her voluptuous assets were visible which was the only good eye candy in this place. I am sorry, but you are just beautiful. Your outfit is revealing your curves that I can't help but appreciate. But worry not, I don't plan on doing anything to you. In the end, I was a gentleman. Era, why is that? I said it before, I have a girl I like. She is the cutest girl in existence, and my beloved. I stopped talking. I felt my heart ached when I was talking about Artoria. I was feeling a little anger when I thought about her activities as a king, but in the end, I still loved her. So a love problem? Hmm, I can't give you any advice. Scathack said and then I saw her in front of me facing my eyes. She was still taller than me so I had to look up, but her eyes were cold. But I can teach you a lot of things. I don't want any kind of slacker, so do you really wish to learn from me? I do, Miss SCA beautiful girl with purple hair. I was having a hard time pronouncing her name. Then call me Shersho from now on. As if understanding my mentality, she accepted me as her student. Then I have to test your total capabilities. She said and took some distance. The broken gibalg in her hand vanished and another similar spear appeared in her hand. She swung her spear around her body beautifully and then pointed it in my direction. Let me tell you some functions. I can't die here so do you until or unless I want. So I want you to show me your best without holding back. I dislike people without courage. So Shersho likes people with courage? Well, good for you, I am not a pushover either. I smirked and take out the spear from the Book of Chasty Foal. Then let's start with pure spear arts. Don't use magic or your spear's ability to levitate. She put the first condition. I instantly knew that she was going to examine my abilities stepwise. Then we both looked at each other's eyes as if ready for the battle. Leaving dust behind, both of us disappeared until the clash of metal was heard. Clang asterisk. I clashed with each other with our spears. You are good to have basic combat. Thanks, sure show, but it is still the beginning. Ah, uh, then let me see what you can of spearsmanship you use. As if following crimson light, she disappeared. My senses screamed so without thinking much and things leading to luck, I dodged a downward vertical slash. She didn't stop and continued to strike me. I was a bit captivated by her spear arts since every time I tried to make a countermeasure of her first style, she changed to another style. After fighting for a few more minutes, she stopped. I think you have basic skills with the spear. Huff asterisk yeah, I learned everything with myself. I panting since not only I used physical strength, but mental too. I knew from the beginning that I would be going to lose. I was not simply a warrior with close combat. Good, you are far better than I expected. Then let's face another round. She smiled slightly and started casting rune magecraft. Within seconds, I could feel that her speed and strength reached another height. I was pretty shocked since it was far more effective than my magic. Not only she takes a mere second casting them, but also the capabilities were far better than mine. Normally chanting time and then casting time of spell of that caliber takes more than 5 minutes, and if we compare the spell she just used to mine then she was better than me. Rune Magecraft is what this magic called. Now prepare yourself. I smiled since that was very precise magic I was searching for. I knew that my time wouldn't be wasted coming here. 
Then I will also show you my full capabilities. I rose in the air and changed my form into half spirit. A wing and crown were formed while my regular spear was levitating in the air with glowing golden color. My capabilities of using chasty foal in the half spirit mode were limited so I first wanted to try regular form with enhanced strength. What a naive thinking I had when you are expecting a fight where warriors start at a slow pace and then go all out but she was different. You think that you can escape from my spear in the air? I heard her voice and before I think, she shot her spear. The crimson demonic spear soared like lighting before piercing my heart. Splash asterisk cough asterisk. No, it didn't pierce me but released some kind of magic that can stun the opponent. This should be the end of the battle but she didn't stop just like that. Another crimson spear appeared in her hand as she aimed at me. I forgot that that was a battle to the death and she was serious about killing me. I am not finished yet, Gibalg alternative. She aimed and shot her spear as if following its sister spear and pierced my heart for real. Boom asterisk. A crimson orb was formed due to intense magic pressure behind her demonic spear and destroyed her opponent. Guess, you have more to show than just mere illusion, Skathak said turning around and looking at me. Behind her, I could be seen with a wound in my chest and a giant golden spear beside me surging with a golden aura. Luckily, I was able to evade her first strike that didn't stun me and then I used illusion to escape. Haha, <laughs> now let me show you my spear. I yelled and shot the giant spear to her position. She tried to run from the upcoming missile but realized that my spear will surely destroy her so as if welcoming death with open arms, she closed her eyes before engulfing in bright light. Boom asterisk. Crimson crossed shaped arc formed followed by a loud explosion. I panicked and wondered if she really died. I realized that she was living for quite some time so maybe she tricked me to kill her. However, I soon found her with bruises and cuts all over the place. I also saw that her thin suit was also shattered showing her bountiful jugs and navel. I felt a little aroused before I shook dirty thoughts. I am not dead yet, Feeny Dash. Yeah no, remember you promised to teach me magecraft? I knew that something was wrong so I hold myself back. TCH. Did you just click tongue? I shook my head. This woman has some weird quirks behind her monotone face. I then took out a blanket and covered her. I then placed her head on my lap and took a deep breath of relief. Era, you didn't get aroused from seeing my body? She asked, looking at my face. When our faces were closed I realized she was really a beauty among beauty. I crossed my hand and retorted, humph, don't get me wrong Shersho. I am a man with filthy desires. It's just that I love a girl so I don't even try to think of anyone besides her. You are indeed a generous man. But don't take it in the wrong way since I still got a boner when I saw you but I cast magic to calm my little brother. Even now, your alluring curves above blanket are quite hard to deal with. Fufu, I like your honest nature. Thought it is quite odd listening to dirty words coming from the mouth of a little boy. It is refreshing. She said then we went silent before she spoke her real wish. Human is made to live for a certain age. It is part of the cycle but when you cross the line to not receive death, you make a great mistake. Death is something I still yearn for. When I saw your real power, I saw a hope that maybe, just maybe I can finally leave this place. I sighed and spoke while caressing her soft purple hair, I am sorry Shersho but no student could pay you this kind of selfish request, not me at least. I still need you to teach me skills and rune magecraft. She also sighed and got up from my lap. For a millisecond, I saw her ears red. It is a little childish of me. Let's go, you have a lot to learn. She said and got up and covered her upper body with the blanket. I sighed in relief that she was not shameful like Vivian and a considerate one. She was about to go when I held her hand. But I am different from others. I will try my best to grant your real wish to repay you. I will save you sure show. I confessed with determination. She looked at me briefly before nodding with a slight smile. She thought that I was just bluffing since I just arrived here but she didn't say anything. Then green particles started to fall like snowflakes. What is that? Skathak asked raising her palm if collecting those particles. My chasty foals another form pollen garden. It heals pretty quickly. Cool, isn't it? I informed about my treasure proudly but then saw something, sure show, why are you crying? I saw her shedding tears from her eyes while her palm was collecting green life orbs. It was the first time I saw her showing genuine expression in form of pure happiness. She sighed and didn't say anything until both of us got fully healed and then went to her palace. 
If you want to support me check out my Patreon at https colon slash slash www.patreon.com slash kayashin. I tend to polls that decide important plot stuff in my P at Trian. Many thanks to my awesome patrons. Ben Phillips If you like the content, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. I'll stay here until next time.